I'm going to share with you 12 must try tips to loosen up your watercolours. Let's get started. So I do sympathise with those of you that can't get loose. So I've got all these tips here to hopefully help you. The most important one I would say is to use a sketchbook. If you're a little bit fearful of getting loose, the worst thing you can do is just get a white blank sheet of great quality watercolour paper. It's so much pressure. So get started with a sketch and use a drawing pen. This is a waterproof fine liner, black um, sort of very fine nibbed pen. Details about the pen can be found in the description. But what I like about using a pen is it makes me look more and more creative. If I've got a pencil and rubber on standby I tend to keep rubbing out and making lots of mistakes this way I'm really really loose and I'm trying to be as minimal as I can creating all these nice marks with the pen but you could also use a charcoal piece of charcoal do a bit of blending some tonal drawings and you can use a twig to draw with when you're painting in pen and wash try to keep your layers of watercolor quite transparent and don't paint too much over the top so that you hide your pen you want the pen to shine that was a little bit of dilute quinacridone rust and I'm using my size 6 brush now I'm painting on a little bit of deep sea green by Schmincke the super granulating colours but you could use some cerulean it's nice cool blue painting it wet on dry in the water and I've just mixed up it's pretty pretty much a muddy colour here but you can use the quinacridone gold and a little bit of ultramarine there in the foreground I'm just sprinkling on now some light brown brusho you could use your watercolour pencils for this with an emery board or sandpaper but it's just to create some textures or when your painting is dry you could spatter it with some quinacridone rust or burnt sienna and I'm actually doing a, a giving it a little spatter now I've mixed up a quite a sort of mid green here using the phthalo turquoise and the Hansa yellow light by Daniel Smith but you could use just Prussian blue and some cadmium yellow this is a little bit more of the quinacridone rust with the ultramarine it's quite a nice dark color now you could wait for your painting to dry but I'm trying to loosen up I just want to get some paint down and just create something you know just get going but sometimes I think just making mistakes sometimes loosens us up we just you know the mistakes over with the scary bit out of the way and you can just get on with the painting and the creating and you can learn so much from your mistakes as well so I'm painting in the reflections damp into damp in the water area here using my size 6 brush with a mix of quinacridone rust and ultramarine but you could use ultramarine and burnt sienna don't make it too watery otherwise it's going to bleed too much but just do a wriggly reflection there and as you can see I'm just putting this mid green on now in the middle distance and creating some detail now with my twig just dipping it into the quinacridone rust and the Payne's grey to create some lovely dark marks so this is just a twig I've got from the garden and I've sharpened it with a pencil sharpener. I've made a puddle of dark watercolour paint and I'm just sketching now sort of wet on dry on my watercolour little sketchbook here. And it's even more loose than the pen is. You can really feel like you can just sort of just see these shapes and just put them on. And because you can't get a lot of watercolour on the twig, you have to keep dipping. You're kind of even more minimalist in a way. So I would say a twig is a really good idea and using a pen or even a bit of charcoal is a great idea. Um, to help you loosen up your watercolours. Because it was watercolour that I use, when I start painting with um, my size 10 brush now onto the um, sketch paper here, um, it may dilute those lines that I've made. And that's okay because it will blend. But I'm using ultramarine and a little bit of yellow mixed on there as well for a very paler background. The background that I did previously was a little bit warmer. So I just want to change things up here. I'm using the phthalo turquoise and the Hansa yellow light this is the quinacridone rust and I've added a little bit of um, well touch of green in there as well all wet on dry I'm using my size 10 brush as well to loosen myself up a bit and I'm just going in with some blue here as well wet on dry and then just softening and using sort of wriggly lines here to create the um, sort of impression of reflections and some nice sort of mid to dark green there in the foreground 
you can see I'm using really broad brush strokes. I'm just sprinkling on a little bit of table salt to see if I can get some nice textures there as well. So I'm really sort of warming up and just sort of testing out different techniques. You do get that loose feeling. You do get that feeling that you're, it, you're a little bit braver and a little bit more fearless sort of thing because I think that's the main thing. It's just sometimes you can be very tentative with a fresh piece of watercolour paper. Now I'm being very fearless here. So I've got my spritzer bottle and I'm just gonna spray the brush show just to get it to activate it a little bit more. But because it's such a small piece of paper and it's a different spritzer bottle and it came out a little bit too much. So I'm just putting some more brush show on um, just to have a bit of fun with it really. And that's the great thing about a sketchbook. Even if things kind of go a little bit wrong, it doesn't matter. Just try things out, see what happens. It's almost turning into a bit of an abstract painting. So I'm using my twig now to draw into the wet paint and the brush show there to sort of draw in some grasses and scratch about and see if I can make some sense of um, the foreground here, creating some texture and detail and dabbing off with my paper towel as well. I thought I'd develop the right hand sketch now because it has dried. I'm just darkening up some of the trees just to bring them forward. And I'm actually painting a much darker riverbank there as well to really kind of create a dark against light with the water. And the, the, the sky is actually very definitely being reflected in the water. I'm trying to paint a little bit of shadows as well from the trees there. So it's a good idea really to loosen up is to use a large brush as I'm doing here um, to paint sort of small fiddly things because once you go to the larger piece of paper and maybe you're using the same brush you'll feel a little bit more confident. So you're restricted a little bit on the sketchbook but you're kind of opening up all sorts of possibilities when you start painting on a larger sheet of paper. So I thought I'd really finish off now with some darks in this little sketch here using a bit of ultramarine and the quinacridone rust, just painting that on wet on dry, even dropping a bit of phthalo turquoise in there and some yellow, just playing around with it, trying to get that water to really look like water. I'm painting the background that much darker to make it pop out. I'm using the corner of the bottom of my tube of gouache actually and just pulling up this wet paint to create thin grasses but also thin reflections as well. Um, I'm just painting some uh, darker trees in here with the quinacridone rust and the ultramarine with my size 10 brush just to create a little bit of interest. So in this one I've kind of changed the composition. I'm going a little bit off piste as it were um, just to experiment really and again experimenting really loosens you up. And that's the whole idea of this is to open up the creativity and see what happens. So I've decided to put a few sort of fence posts and things like this um, just to create a bit more interest. And I've also painted some squiggly reflections in the water there using a little bit of Payne's Grey. Just using a little bit of Hansa Yellow Light with a touch of blue here and spattering a mid green. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that it helps you loosen up your watercolours. A more in-depth tutorial is available on my Patreon membership and a link for this tutorial can be found in the description below. And if you want to support the content that I do create here on YouTube, why not think about joining my Patreon membership? You will get access to my weekly exclusive tutorials and downloadable line drawings. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Happy loose painting. Bye for now.